I will uh, now call this meeting, uh, the November 1st meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. Uh, this open meeting of the Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the cur current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some of the attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So at this point, I will take a roll call to ensure that all members of the board are present and can hear me, starting with Ken Lau, who is not here this evening. Uh, Eugene Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakalis. Present. Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. And I am Rachel Zenberry, uh, Chair of the Board, and I am here as well. Uh, we have two members of the staff joining us this evening. Uh, Jennifer Raitt, Director of the um, Department of Planning and Community Development. Present. And Kelly Linema, also with the Department of Planning and Community Development. Present. Great. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, let's see, we will move right ahead to our continued public hearings, item number one on our agenda, starting with uh, docket 3665, 645 Massachusetts Avenue. This is uh, currently a request that the application be withdrawn without prejudice. And I will turn it over to um, Bob Inessi, who is here on behalf of the applicant. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, we are re uh, requesting, I've just been retained as I indicated uh, last week at the uh, hearing uh, by Chase Bank. Uh, I am coming in uh, anew and I'm taking a new look at everything at this point. Uh, we are uh, perhaps uh, going to be tweaking our plans to some extent. I don't know whether we might be advertising for uh, other zoning relief that perhaps may not have been advertised for. I can't tell you that right now. Uh, I would uh, indicate and suggest to the members of the board that no one is going to be prejudiced uh, by the withdrawal uh, because the public is going to have a right to be heard. Everyone is going to have a right to be heard. Uh, the members of the board who heard the matter the last time in part uh, will be heard and there'll be a full hearing on this matter. So therefore I'm requesting uh, that the matter uh, be withdrawn without prejudice. I can withdraw it anytime I want to, okay? And the only reason that I ever add the word without prejudice is I was trained as a lawyer. I've tried probably a hundred jury trials in my career. I've argued cases in the appeals court, U.S. Court of Appeals. I've never had a situation where uh, I have not asked that a matter be withdrawn without prejudice. I've never had that matter turned down in my many years of practicing law. So I'm requesting that at this point, and I would like the board to act on that request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh... I appreciate the clarification. I will note that unfortunately, um, Ken uh, Lau has still unfortunately not, not joined us this evening. And when the, uh, when the docket was originally opened, it was opened with four board members. This was before Steve Everlack had joined the board. And unfortunately I need four, <laughs> four votes to, um, with, because this is an action on the special permit application to withdraw, um, to, to vote on the request to withdraw without prejudice. Um, so unfortunately, um, I don't think that we can vote on this tonight. Jenny, do you see any other way around this? I The only thing I would suggest is if you want, you can move on to the next item and you could come yeah, back to this just to see, wait, uh, that's not going to take very long, but, um, you know, we can we can continue to wait a little bit more for Ken. I don't I but you have to have Ken here to to take that vote. 
And withdrawn without prejudice is part of 40A section 16. It is not, um, and it is a specific clause and it applies to something that has already gone through a hearing, which this has started a hearing process. Um, so it is not as simple as just withdrawing it. It does need to be voted on and acted upon by the board. Um, but unfortunately, not this, uh, we, we, we need Ken to be part of the board to take that vote. So either you can wait a bit or um, we can put it off till the 15th. Do you, do you have a preference, um, Mr. Nessie? I apologize for um, is, the lack of a full board this evening. It was not something there, I was aware is of. There any, is there any expectation that Kin will appear this evening? Uh, I have done everything I can to, to contact him. I don't know what the situation is other than there must have been um, some sort of extenuating circumstance. It's not, this is highly unusual. So I apologize. Okay. Yes. Uh, when is the next hearing? That uh, November fifteenth. I'm on that evening for another matter. The next matter, uh, in any event. Uh, well, uh, it, let's move on to the next matter. As Jenny has suggested, if Kin shows up in the interim, great. If he does not, then it would have to go on. I, I agree with Jenny and you for the fifteenth. Thank you for your understanding. I appreciate it. So we will uh, pause. Um, and move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is docket number 3348, 833 Massachusetts Avenue. And uh, this is a request uh, by the owner to uh, move the continued hearing from December 6th to November 15th. And uh, Attorney Anessi, I believe that you are representing the owner on this item as well. Uh, so if yeah. there's anything that you'd like to mention. Um, Just briefly, uh, the, I did speak with the client after the last meeting and we are in fact meeting with the Historical Commission tomorrow evening. So we ought to have a sense for where the Historical Commission is headed tomorrow evening. And I said to the client, it probably doesn't make sense to wait until December 6th. Uh, let's try to get back before the ARB. We have a sense for where the ARB may be coming on this. Let's try to get back before the ARB sooner than that. He has agreed. That's the reason I'm requesting that the NADA be placed on the hearing list for the 15th of November. Great, thank you so much for the clarification. Uh, I'll now open it up to members of the board for uh, any questions that you might have. Uh, we'll start with Jean. No, I'm fine with the continuance to the 15th. Great, thank you, Jean. Melissa, any questions? No questions, I'm fine with it. Uh, Steve, any questions? No questions. Great, thank you. Um, in that case, uh, what I would like to do is see if there is a motion to move the Continued hearing for docket number 3348, 833 Massachusetts Avenue from December 6, 2021 to November 15th, 2021. I so move. Is there a second? Second. Great, we will take a roll call vote. Uh, starting with Jean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I am a yes as well. So we will see you back for that docket on November 15th. And unfortunately, it does not look like Kin has joined us yet. Why don't we say then that uh, the uh, Chase matter will be on for the 15th as well. Okay, great. Thank you for your understanding. And again, I apologize. Um, so is there a motion to uh, continue the, uh, the hearing for docket number 3665, 645 Massachusetts Avenue from this evening to November 15th? Is so moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right, we'll start with a roll call. Uh, Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. All right, we will see you in two weeks on both matters. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, much appreciated. So that, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so that closes uh, agenda item number one for us this evening. Uh, and we will now move to agenda item number two, which is the preliminary discussion of zoning amendments. 
And um, Jenny, I will turn this over to you as I believe that you have a request from um, one of the residents, James Fleming, uh, with regard to a future warrant article filing. Yes, um, thank you, Rachel. Um, so we have discussed uh, this uh, plan to have uh, residents or any other petitioners other than the redevelopment board to come to the board and start discussing uh, their ideas or plans for filing of warrant articles prior to the time that things do and inevitably get filed usually at the end of January. Um, and uh, we've been updating the sort of timeline from you know getting things filed to town meeting, which was introduced to us and uh, voted on by the board earlier this year. So with that in mind, um, and we had previously worked with James Fleming um, last year on a warrant article and James has since reached out and has a couple of ideas to share this evening. Uh, one is about a parking reduction uh, related to apartment dwellings, um, the residential use for apartments. And the second article is related to the uses of our open space and recreational areas for a variety of activities, uh, which um, there are some limitations actually in our zoning bylaw related to that. So um, staff have met with James to talk about the second idea and have uh, sort of designed a, a potential process to follow. And we've had a little bit of uh, communication about that but I, I figured having James attend this evening and start to share these ideas with all of you, and here he is, um, would be useful. And then uh, just to set expectations, the Zoning Bylaw Working Group is meeting this uh, Wednesday morning um, at 8.30 a.m. And they are going to be talking about uh, other potential zoning amendments uh, to follow up from the zoning audits that have occurred. Um, as well as other recommendations and suggestions. And then we thought we would come back again on the 15th to continue that discussion, to report out from the Zoning Bylaw Working Group, and also to allow any board members to share their additions or ideas uh, that they've been considering um, for us to discuss. So with that, um, that's sort of the timeline and plan for now. And I'm open to any other suggestions, but also if there aren't any, I'll hand it over to James, if that's okay, Rachel. Or uh, sure, it looks like Jean has something. Yep. Just a, a quick question yeah. um, to make sure that I understood. So it's on the 15th that the Zoning Bylaw Working Group will be reporting back and any of us can also present our proposals. Okay. Additions, yeah. If, if something doesn't come up on Wednesday during the Zoning Bylaw Working Group meeting, which a couple of you are probably attending, um, then we will have certainly much time, you know, it doesn't have to just be on November 15th, but that is one opening for that opportunity to have that discussion. Great, thank you for the thank clarification. You. You're welcome. Uh, Steve or Melissa, do you have any questions for Jenny before we turn it over to James to discuss the two items that he has? Nope. No. Okay, great. James, the floor is yours and I appreciate you uh, coming to chat with us this evening. Thanks. So the the first one, should I assume that you all know the zoning and bylaw by like the back of your hand? No? Jean, Jean, shake you could assume that we know the zoning bylaw. Okay. Not necessarily so, like the back of our hand, but yes, okay. we can certainly, we, most of us have it and we can certainly go to any references that you okay. would like to give so, us. So the, so the, the first one re parking for apartments, the section is section six, 6.1 off street parking. Um, I guess it's page six dash two, the table of off street or six one four table of off street parking regulations. Uh, for the apartment building class of use. So um, below there's a section which says single two or three family dwelling, dwellings, which is one space per unit. And then below that is a separate category for apartment buildings, which has what looks like a tiered structure for varying numbers of bedrooms. Um, so my, my, the Warren protocol, what I'd, that I'd like to do is to, to combine those two and make it one space per unit for all I guess you'd say all four of those categories, or maybe the name changes to be something else. Um, and the reason is that I live in an apartment, but it just happens to be on the first floor of a two family, and it only needs one unit under this bylaw, which doesn't make sense to me, because if I move into a building, I don't use more cars, unless 
they have an empty space and I want one or something like that. So I don't I don't see why it needs to be that way. So that's that's the the reason behind the uh, the first one. Great, thanks. If it um, is okay with you, what I'd love to do is get some initial reaction and and thoughts from the board members on each one. Okay. Is that great. There's maybe some questions for you as well. Yeah. Okay, super. Jean, I'll start with you. Any questions for James? <laughs> thanks. Um, I have one question, but we'll start by saying I think it's an excellent idea. Um, with single two and three family dwellings, one space per dwelling unit, it seems to me that it's just consistent to apply at one space per dwelling unit for um, larger buildings too. The question for James is if you look at the apartment building thing, it says, and one space per five units of public housing for the elderly, we're gonna keep that, right? That's not part of your... Uh, sure. I know nothing about public housing for the elderly, and I'd really like to avoid stirring up any mud that I don't have to. And also, it looks like it would, if we made it one space per unit, then it would actually quintuple the requirement, which, no, let's not do that. So okay. then I guess we would then have a separate category for public housing for the elderly, I guess, would be some, maybe some other name, whatever it happens to be. The, the intent is that the all the categories that say x spaces per number of bedrooms uh becomes one for the apartments thank you great thank you for the clarification gene uh, melissa any questions or comments for james um hi james hi. could you um help me understand kind of the aggregate i know you're speaking to your one your unit in particular but mm -hmm how many units and kind of what is kind of a bigger totalitarian impact? I'm not sure uh, what do you mean? So maybe it's the analysis, and I don't know if this is something that you've worked on or if you've brought it to um, planning staff in terms of how many units this would impact or how many parcels. Um, no, I haven't. I talked to Jenny and I think it was Kelly, but we never we never looked at the total number of things this would affect. And this I don't think this would apply retroactively to any projects that exist. It would be going forward, and I don't know how many are coming up. Um, looking at just I looked at a handful of buildings that are in I live in the I don't know if it's I live in like Middle East Arlington, and there's a couple buildings at the end of one of my streets. Um, I took just like a cursory look and it looks like they they were built sometime in the 70s or 80s it's the style and they more or less fit this table exactly um based on the like they they have 14 spaces and based on what i can see of the exterior it looks like 12 units um which is about right if you assume 1.15 to one and a half spaces each but no no town wide how many might this have affected although i just assumed that it affected anything built after 1973 or so. Okay, and then- Sorry, Melissa, uh, before, it uh, looks like Jenny put her hand up to also answer oh, that part of your thank question. You. So I'll, I'll kick it over to Jenny. Um, definitely not to answer, but more to just say that um, the purpose of this conversation is to maybe give James some things to think about to prepare. So the, the questions that you're asking, which would be that you'd like to see or have a set, I'm just, taking what you're saying. You want no, to see helpful. what the impact might be. And so James, if you might need to work with staff to think about what, you okay. know, how many apartment buildings are there right now? And what would it mean if we made these changes or how many sure. are in the pipeline, those kinds of things that would help to answer Melissa's question. We, okay. we of course have not gotten that far with James. It was, um, this is a very early part of this conversation. I will say though, we did propose a similar change in 2019 um, as part of a whole package of potential changes. And so, um, you know, we can certainly look back into the research that we did at that time. But um, I just want to make sure that I'm clarifying mm -hmm. what um, what might happen as a result of James and, and potentially other residents who wish to speak with the board, um, what to expect from this process, that the questions that are being asked are things for you to think about and research as you move forward, not to necessarily expect that you've already okay. no, made these, drawn these conclusions, just so you know. Right. Thank you, that's a that's great sense. clarification, Jenny. So, um, 
Madam Chair, may I continue? Please go ahead. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, so I guess that would be something, James, I'm thinking about in terms of how mm -hmm. it impacts kind of the other areas it might impact. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be helpful to understand how this aligns with either um, at least the master plan and some of the zoning uh, bylaw kind of adjustments that have been looked at through this board. And then I think, um, and I'm not recalling if I believe prior to the meters, there was a parking management study conducted. So if um, there was an analysis through that study that may help inform this, um, because I think when we're looking at parking, we do want to be mindful of um, how it is kind of as a whole, on street parking, off street parking, those conditions and how we're managing the whole. So I think those are things um, that would be helpful for the board to understand going forward with this recommendation. Great, thank you, Melissa. I think that those are all helpful um, questions for, for James to look into and to uh, work with the department to study further. Uh, I'll turn it over, Jean. I saw that you had your hand up. Was that a clarification? Oh, you're on mute. I'll wait till the end. Okay, thank you. Steve. Yeah, um, actually, I'd like to start with a, a comment that Mr. Benson made uh, with respect to apartment buildings and having uh, the regulation that uh, there be one space per five units of public housing for the elderly. Um, that probably should go into its own section because it I, I don't think it contemplates the possibility of having public housing for the elderly in two or three family dwellings, um, or at least, you know, if you were to get into that situation, you'd have two rules that apply. Um, overall, I do, I am in favor of putting apartment buildings, the parking requirements for apartment buildings um, with, to match those of single two or three family dwellings. Um, just, I have a two, a home with two bedrooms, and it doesn't make sense to me why, you know, this would require one space under as a single family, but if it were happened to be an apartment, it would require one and a half. Um, I also want to point out that, you know, with respect to housing costs, uh, parking is, is land, land cost is one of our most, is one of our most significant drivers. So to the effect that we can use parking you know space that might have been dedicated to parking to either um you know providing more dwellings or more more open space just to me that seems like a um you know a desire a better outcome uh, in terms of questions that um you know i might be curious to know the answer to if mr fleming can uh possibly provide at some point um you know just some sort of analysis comparing you know cost per unit you know given for a give a certain size building under the two regulations uh, i believe that boston did a little bit of this when they started instituting parking maximums um and that might be a source to draw from finally uh i just would like to mention that i think the last big apartment building permitted in Arlington was 1165R Mass Ave. This was uh, a comprehensive permit that went through the ZBA and, you know, I happened to be part of those proceedings. Uh, the parking ratio there was just slightly over one space per unit. Great. Thank you, Steve, for your comments and uh, clarifications. Uh, Jean, you had something that you wanted to to jump in with. I just, I just did want to follow up on something that was said, which is, I mean, this is clear that it would apply prospectively to new buildings coming to town. But I think I, I might disagree to say that it doesn't apply retroactively or retrospectively, whatever the right word is. Because if there's a building now, let's say it has 10 units, residential units, that has 20 spaces, theoretically, the owner of the building would be subject to the new rules and could reduce the number of spaces. Not that that would happen, but it, it could happen. It could result in a little bit more open space as a result of this both retrospectively and prospectively. So I, I do want to point that out. 
Great, thank you, Jean. And uh, James, I would just add that I too am really interested in um, this proposal. And um, I, I agree that I think the questions that Melissa asked are really uh, important to, to take a look at. It sounds like um, there is some existing data based on the study that Jenny had mentioned that had been completed back in 2019. And um, I think on first blush, I'm, I'm very interested in seeing where, where this goes as well. Uh, let's see, would you like any other comments before we ask James to move on to his second item? Okay, seeing none, uh, why don't we move on? Did you have any other questions for, for us on that item or did you wanna move on to no, the I don't, I don't, open space? I don't think so. Uh, just if there's any like technical things to watch out for in the in the article, although I guess we can work on that later. Yes, Word definitely. I think that that's something that we can definitely, I think crafting what the uh, scope of the article is, is the most important, um, sure. you know, as you move towards the, the warrant article filing. Oh, right. That's right. Because the art, the, the warrant article is very broad and then you write the text of it. And yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. We, we did all this a year ago. That's right. right. But, okay. but the fact that you're so far ahead of this, I think is really great because it gives you the opportunity then to have to make sure that you have all of the, the data and um, the things that you'll need to eventually craft that scope and make sure that your um, the scope is is defined broadly enough um, for what you want, but without going into um, a, an area that um, that takes you out of the 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 kind of the the crux of the idea that you're looking to move forward. Great. Did you want to move on to the second item? Sure. Um, actually, Don's got his hand up. Do we, is there a public I, comment? I see on this? that. Yep. I'm actually not going to take um, public comments until after we're fully done with this discussion. Okay. Thank um, you. So the the second one, well, actually, I guess, Jenny, I guess there's technically three because I, I kind of decided to split the second one into two. So um, this is sort of a continuation of a bunch of town policies that were enacted under COVID where fitness businesses were allowed to use parks under permits from the parks department during the nice weather so they could stay open when we were restricted from being inside. So the idea was that um, that would become a permanent option and that the parks department would more or less have the authority to set conditions of and to like when, where, and how a business could use a piece of open space that, that the town, one of the town departments controlled. Um, but when Jenny and I were looking at the, the section of the zoning bylaw, which I believe is, it's five something, something, something. Um, I know that's very helpful. Uh, table 563 use regulations for multi-use PUD industrial transit and open space districts. Um, actually, no, sorry, it's not that. It is the description of the districts, which is section 561, the open space district. So Jenny had pointed out that the description of the open space district technically doesn't say we can do anything with open space. So it's there to exist and be green and free of human activity forevermore, um, which is obviously not what happens. I mean, good luck telling someone you playing on the playground to stop. So, um, so the thinking was that maybe there would be an article to one, clarify the use of the open space district to say that you can do something, whatever it is, whatever the text is in that district. And then the second thing that we had discovered is that, um, and this is, I guess, this is where five, table 563 becomes relevant, is that uh, all the way down in the accessory use category on page 5-45, there are a handful of uses allowed in the open space district, one of which is temporary food or beverage at an event for profit. This is a fundraiser, a fundraiser for a nonprofit based in Arlington. These all require a special permit, which from what Jenny and I were talking about, sounds like they have to go to either the ZBA or the ARB. 
and we couldn't, uh, well, it was Jenny, Ali Carter, and myself, no, none of us could think of any, any example in recent history where someone had actually gone to the ZBA or the ARB and said, hey, can we do something in the open space district? Um, they would just go to the parks department or they would go to some other department who would then refer them or some other thing would happen. So th that, was, that was another thing that that more administrative slash technical article would go over is say, you know, these things are allowed. You don't have to go to these boards and get a special permit, but you do have to whatever the current process is that they follow. So like the, they, they go to the parks department or the conservation commission or whatever it is, and they ask very nicely if they can use the space to do whatever. Um, so that's, that's the first one. And why don't we talk about that? Cause that alone sounds like a nightmare to deal with. Great, thanks. Can you um, give me the second citation, not 5.6.1e, but the second citation that you referred? Uh, uh, 5.6.3, um, it's a very multi long multi-page table. It's on page 5-45. Yeah. Uh, district regulations, accessory uses, class of use. Accessory uses, okay, great. Under, uh, there's three in a row yep. for that are allowed in the open space district. Got it. Um, yeah, so the, the first thing was, well, that sounds, uh, uh, inconsistent. So why don't we maybe do something about that? Great. Thank you. So you're looking for feedback on those first two before you move to the third. Sure. The okay, third great. one is very boring by comparison. Yeah, just, I, the, Jenny, go ahead. there was there, the third, I'm not sure if this is the third part that you're talking about, which is to introduce the special regulation. Uh, I guess I guess the, so, okay. So the anyways, there's like a third part, which is more of just a, how to, okay. fi how to fix this which is that there would be a, a new section 8.4 at the very end under the special regulations, which would more or less outline if you want to do something in an open space district, you do whatever it is that is currently happening, just to, to write it down. So that way, anyone who says there needs to be a process, there is a process. Got it. Great, thank you. So, Jenny, so. anything else before I take questions from the board? No, I just wanted to make sure that that was clarified. Yep, <laughs> it was no, that's, a package that's, that's of that there's a suite of things that might yep. happen. Fabulous. Thank you. I'll so, go to Jean, Jean first for any questions or comments. Actually, actually I have one thing. Oh, so, please go ahead, James. So, so, so the, my thing is, I don't care how this happens as long as it does happen. So if it, there doesn't need to be an 8.4, if you determine that there doesn't need to be, it's just this is, this is what our discussions had entailed so far, and it seemed reasonable. Great. Thank you. Jean. Um, so I like the thinking. I'm not sure I agree with where you're going on some of these. Um, so let me walk you through my thinking about it. And obviously I've just heard it right now. So this is off the top of my head. Um, amending the definition in 5.6.1e, I really don't think that's necessary to specify the type of uses because all that's really doing is defining the district and says that they're under jurisdiction of the various departments in town, which means, and has met in the past, that those departments make decisions on what's going on there. So I'm not sure we need to complicate this where I don't think the complication is needed on, um, the accessory uses table on um, page is that now? Page five dash forty-five. All right, on section five point six point three. Yeah. Yeah, it it's... certainly makes sense to me that temporary food or beverage concession and the fundraising event should be um, subject to whatever approval of whatever entity in the town happens to be responsible for that particular piece of open space. Um, and I think if you just get rid of the SP, that's really all you need to do because they'll still need to go to the Park and Rec Commission or whichever one it is to get approval. Um, I'm a little, I, you didn't mention anything about accessory off-street parking and loading spaces or I think the special permit would still be appropriate in an I, open yeah, area. So, 
this is this is kind of where the third warrant article bleeds in. I was mm -hmm. I was only gonna think about, I was only thinking about certain ones, but mm -hmm. but just in general, mm -hmm. thinking of things that the town has hosted as events or that other businesses have put on, just not having to have them go to the ZBA or the ARB seemed like a reasonable thing. It, it does. I'm just not sure about you know accessory off street parking and loading spaces tend to be permanent. Right. So um, I, I was thinking this was this was intent. The original impetus was temporary things okay. like if you were going to do a, an event. And yeah, so, so, I, so like if you're going to permanently modify the open space, you probably want a special permit. Well, that's why I would suggest at this point keeping the special permit for the accessory off street parking. What about and, the, um, and, the, the third I'm, one? And I'm not sure about other accessory use customarily incidental because I would I because it's not specific it doesn't tell you what it is well it doesn't tell you what it is but on the other hand if it was no special permit they'd still need to get um the approval of whichever entity in town mm. um had responsibility for the property so I'm a little bit more unsure about that one but I think it probably would work without special permit especially since that seems to be the way it's worked for years for those without special permits. So yeah, that, those, those are my thoughts. I don't think you need anything at the end that tells people where they go to get approvals in town. That's not, I think, the role of the zoning bylaw. That's just my initial thoughts, but thanks for bringing it to us. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Melissa, questions or comments? <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks, James, for bringing this up. Um, could you help me again just explain at the beginning your intention with it? Okay, so, so the, the okay, so okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let the third one slip. So basically, what I'd like to do is allow for um, fitness businesses to, and um, the other line item I have is for like cultural arts organizations, like if you wanted to put on a rehearsal or a production you know, in a park of a Shakespeare or something like that, um, that you should be able to. And it was in, in trying to bring that together that we, we realized that these are labeled special permit. And so okay. the, the intent is that no, it's, this is more of, this isn't more of technical, just trying to fix it because no one actually gets a special permit because that would be ridiculous. So the point, the intent here is to just write, rewrite this to, to say what's actually happening. That, okay. you just, that you just go to whatever department owns the land and you ask for permission to do whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. Um, so it would be for-profit entities, non-profit entities would be able to go and ask, and it's for temporary actions in a public space, essentially. That's, what, that, that, open space. That, that's what's in there right now. And so the, the idea is if you just flip these from special permit to yes, they still go to the parks department or whoever it is like they currently do, but now they aren't not getting a special permit that the zoning bylaw says they should be doing, but I see that no one expects them to do. So it's 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 more administrative than anything else. Okay. I would I would love to see them try someone try and enforce this and see that, but you know, okay. We don't need to do that. Um. So I guess I think um. The thinking to make facilitate this and allow businesses and different entities to be a little bit more creative and temporary support that. Um, I think from my perspective, it'd be good to hear from staff and maybe Allie, you know, what kind of requests do come up, how often. Um, and I'd like to understand better maybe town policies around, um, you know, for-profit entities on public land. Um, different communities have different perspectives on that and how it's administered. Um, because, you know, I think when it comes to for-profit companies making a profit in town property. That's where some controversy starts to come up. There's ways to address it through permitting fees and things like that. But I think the intention to make it, um, you're facilitating the creative use and activating and enlivening spaces. And that's how I'm reading this. Um, I, you know, I support, so I think, um, mm -hmm. but just understanding 
where some of the um, issues might come up around the for-profit on private land would be good for me to understand. Yep. I, my intention was to more or less just say this is allowed and then the, the relevant department gets to decide the what, where, and when. And if that involves a fee, then I don't want to be the one saying that they can or can't do that. They should to, they get to decide. It's their, par it's their parcel. Oh, these are good. I take them down. Great. Melissa, any other questions for James? Steve? Yeah, I've got um, one question and I think two comments. So my fir the question first, um, I'm wondering, did the, did, the, did the town charge fees uh, to the folks who have been holding beer gardens during the summer? Oh, I, I don't know. Like Jenny can answer Jenny, that question. No, please help me. The town didn't hold any beer gardens. The, it was, uh, that was at the Jason Russell house. But did the town I charge fees, I guess? Well, I, we didn't have any beer gardens this past summer. Um, in the past, um, there was a very marginal fee and it was associated with taking care of the lawn mm -hmm. um, after the fact. Okay. Um, and paying for a cleaning company to take care of the bathrooms in the building that was being used for such. But nothing, nothing more than that um, at okay. the time that we had that particular beer garden. The mm -hmm. beer gardens this past summer were at the Jason Russell House, so mm -hmm. not not town property. Uh, okay. Um, and um, then the temporary outdoor permitting process was only during COVID. Um, we've only had those regulations in place, um, and we're currently trying to get. Uh, actually, it was uh, the select board. Um, agreed to approve allowing that to happen, uh, that sort of continued uh, temporary permitting process, which was a recommendation that came from the Arlington Economic De uh, Development Recovery Task Force, which Rachel sits on. Um, and the Recovery Task Force has actually been looking at a lot of these issues, including this issue around the use of open spaces for this type of activity and some of the barriers that we've been faced with uh, in trying to do that and uh, execute those efforts during the pandemic trying to find a way to make them somewhat permanent. Temporary, permanent activities, permanent, mm -hmm. temporary activities, rather. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that one of the, if there is a silver lining that came out of the pandemic, it's the fact that it reminded us how much fun you could have being outside. Um, and I hope we can continue that in, in the future. Um, just to the, to the um, a, a remark about uh, the use table in 563, the temporary food or beverage concession for profit in an event and the special re special permit requirement to do that in the open space district. Um, you know, just thinking if one were to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask for a special permit for such a use, uh, you know, I presume, I presume it would be a normal special permit where there is two weeks of advertising in the paper of record prior to a public hearing. Um, and then after public he hearing, there's time to write a decision, uh, time for the board to vote to approve the decision. And then a 20, peri uh, 20 day appeal period has to go by. That's a really, really high bar. <laughs> um, so I, I agree with the notion of I, I support the idea of, um, you know, I, I'm supportive of the idea of, you know, imposing a lower barrier or um, less stringent requirements on it. Um, and I, I, as someone said earlier, I would also uh, be interested to hear what our economic development coordinator in the, you know, and the business community, how they feel would feel about such a thing. Thank you. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, and James, I I think that I I agree with with Steve. I think that if the goal is really removing impediments and streamlining a process to get to um, to get to a, a vehicle by which we can um, more quickly and in a more streamlined way approve some of these temporary activations that meet a certain amount of um, requirements um, might not be a bad idea to look at both pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, what the process has been because it is different and what has been approved versus has not been approved. Um, again, if the goal is to come up with a process 
um, you know, removing this barrier of special permit, which isn't even being followed anyway, is, is one thing, but then what are, um, are there any other barriers that need to be addressed as, as part of this in terms of creating a, a new process? Sorry, I'm just taking notes. No problem. So, so I guess this is a question about Jean's point is do we even, if we turn it, let's say we flip the, um, the special permit to yes for the temporary food or beverage. Um, would it really just be you still just go to the parks department to ask for permission to use it? Uh, Jenny, I see you nodding your yeah, head. Yeah, not, not necessarily. It's either the, it could be Parks and Rec Commission, it could be the Conservation Commission, it could be the Select or, Board. Or, it's or, multiple But But there is, but, but, but they would, you would do, you would go to whoever owns the parcel and ask for Whoever it. owns it. So I, I guess then maybe we don't need a, a section, which is great, a lot less for me to have to write. Yeah, I think the point of the section was to um, more codify sort of the steps as to why it's okay to have those types of uses in the parks. Um, and so that was also in part why we were talking about amending the definition, um, which is, uh, speaks to how, how we currently use our open space and recreational areas. And um, we talked about how not, um, you know, there's there's sometimes some tension about using those spaces for these types of activities. So finding a way to have the zoning reflect that um, in some manner. That was that was one of the part of the reasoning behind that. And Jenny, just to clarify, that's the activation of these spaces. Activation, yes. Right. Okay. So I think that that's something, James, to think about where um, where that might best live as you come back to this is where within the zoning bylaws, again, the goal becomes to um, encourage activation. Mm -hmm. Alyssa's okay. got her hand up. I um, was just curious also maybe how this fits in, maybe this is for our planning staff. I know, you know we talked about the parklets and the public right of way. Um, this seems to me that it's related and I don't know if there's separate uh, initiative that's moving that forward um, and how this dovetails and if it should be kind of considered as a package for you know, considering COVID era practices that support businesses that enliven space placemaking and that this is its own, you know, kind of item. That's a great question. And I'll uh, ask Jenny to speak to how the parklets are being looked at going forward. They're being looked at under that same sort of temporary outdoor licensing um, through the select board, not through a zoning um, amendment. So it wouldn't be tied to this process. Do you want to continue, Melissa? Um, well, I guess I'm just curious because I think the idea is to streamline it, right? So then how are we, you know, I think we, I guess I would like to see how we make it a little bit easier. So if you're a business and you want to do something um, interesting that's in the public right of way or open space, is it going to be a straightforward temporary permit pass? Um, or am I going to have to figure out which board to go to? Um, I guess I'd like to see if there's a way for us to give some consideration to streamlining that from the perspective of the applicant. That is that is what we are streamlining. And that's the process that the select board approved last week. Um, but in terms of the zoning, we're not talking about zoning for, I might be confused by your question, so I'm sorry. So please let me, if I'm, if I'm not answering the right question, it might be because I don't understand. Are you suggesting that we amend zoning related to parklets or am I conflating these two things? I'm sorry, is that what you were? So, well, but maybe that's where it's on, on me. So the zoning for the parklet exists as it st stands now, there's zoning for that. No, there's no, it's no. not related to zoning at all. It's it's basically a temporary use of a, of a parking space for outdoor dining. And that process is approved by the select board. They're also approving other processes. You know, again, 
depends upon which entity owns the property. Um, so they might approve other activation, to use that word, um, in other public spaces. But if they're not, then it would be through the Parks and Rec Commission or some other body. That's what we proposed previously. It's not related to a zoning amendment. Not, I may not be totally following um, your question. No, your I think that's questions. great. No, thank you, Jenny, for okay. trying to help me kind of navigate it. I guess um, from what James is proposing, I understand it's kind of peeling back the special permit so it can move forward. But when it moves forward, I guess what board what body is in front of it has yet been to be determined or is that dependent on the land depends on the land um and part of the reason to, that we goes back to james intention is james's intention which is to remove what is really an impediment that the park the parks and rec commission does not want to permit these things because the zoning bylaw says that you cannot have these there is nothing in the zoning bylaw right now that says that you can do these types of have these types of uses uh, do have, I guess you do them as well. But um, that's that is the impediment that we were trying to. I, I don't want to speak for you, James, but I believe that this was the this was what his intention was. Correct, James. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that that's the third warrant article, and then this this is the one that was like, oh, we really shouldn't be requiring a special permit because the event your 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 waiting your twenty day waiting appeal period will have. When that passes, your event will have come and gone and no one will have attended and you won't have had an event because it takes so long. So, and no one does it anyways. So it's, it's, if we're not following our own rules, well, let's just not do that. We'll just, we'll just make it a yes. And then whoever owns the parcel gets to decide the conditions and when. Okay. That makes sense. So I think, yeah, I, I appreciate the extra explanation. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Um, Let's see, Steve, did you have any? Uh, nothing further. Nothing, anything further? Gene, I think you had your hand up at one point. Yeah, it, just, it just occurred to me that the park near my house occasionally has had you know, Shakespeare in the park. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they didn't go and get a special permit each time. I think they just got permission from the Park and Recreation Commission to do Shakespeare in the park. And uh, you know, I just think getting rid of the or changing those three SPs to Y would probably solve these problems. So thank you. Great, great. So it sounds like moving to in a, a yes, but with the conditions as identified by the um, by the body that has jurisdiction over that particular yeah, land. That was the intent. It to be, yeah. Great. Jenny? But also to add the fitness uses, which yes. is currently the business fitness so, activities. So this, so this is number three. three. This okay. is number three. This, and I kept them separate because if someone doesn't want fitness, if, if this is basically just for town meeting members, if a fitness, if someone doesn't want that to happen, but they do say, oh yeah, we really shouldn't be requiring a special permit, then they can vote on them separately. It's the only reason I'm filing two different articles. Um, the assuming the second one. Well, actually, I guess the third one is basically just the second one, but we add two new entries to the use table. And this comes out of a discussion I had with Joe Connolly from the Parks Department and Todd Dugheim Town Council um, about uh, allowed uses in the parks. And basically what fell out of the discussion is that parks and recreation will not allow anything in the parks that doesn't have an explicitly, is not explicitly allowed by the zoning bylaw. I don't know why they do that, but that's that's why they do that. That's what I asked him if he, that it was accurate, and he said yes. Um, and I, I have I can send the email correspondence if that helps. Um, but so I was like, okay, well, I can't change how the parks committee thinks about their work, but I can change, I can feed them what they eat. I can add new entries to the use table that says we allow um, some some entry that says cultural arts organizations can do rehearsals and productions in the park. That would be nice to, um, and then the other one would be uh, some description that allows fitness businesses to use parks for classes, things like that. Ba basically, whatever whatever the parks department is currently allowing and on a temporary basis for the COVID policies, just make that permanent in effect. That's the intent of number three. Great, thank you. 
Sí. This is sort of surprising because the park near my house, oops, the park near my house hosts all sorts of sporting events, cross country track meets take place there, archery takes place there, orienteering takes place there. So in addition, and some of those are, you know, not profit making. So I'm sort of surprised that Park and Rec apparently allows some of those things, but doesn't allow a yoga teacher to um, teach a yoga class in the park, even though Tai Chi's often taught in some of the town's parks during the summertime. So maybe think about tweaking the wording of this a little bit so it deals with the reality of what actually goes on in the parks. So inst it's instead more than, of- It's more than simply profit making places that use the park for sporting and fitness and things like that. So would that be then a, you said tweak the language. That you would propose because your language is just profit making entity or something like that. I guess. Well, then I guess I wonder what their rationalization is for allowing soccer teams and lacrosse teams and whatever else to use parks if it's not in the zoning bylaw. Yeah. Well, that's why I was surprised to hear you say that. It would be interesting to know where they draw the line so you can write something for this bylaw that... That, bo yeah, that bothers me on a much deeper level, <laughs> quite, quite frankly, that they aren't they they don't consistently follow even what i guess their their head is saying they allow um but i guess i can just ignore that for now and write entries that say whatever i'm trying to get done and then maybe have that discussion at a later date i think just further to jean's point trying to think as broadly as you can about the entry that um would again um, have a broad interpretation of the profit and non-for-profit uses. Because again, if the response you've received is that um, whatever is not specifically identified is not something you know that is currently being uh, considered for approval, if um, you can identify again, the the broadest version of of that, because again, you're saying fitness and um, a specific cultural arts piece, but there may be other very valid uses that we are not contemplating right now that, um, you know, we don't want to have to have this list again. to include, you know, 50 different uses. So I, I would suggest that you try and again, much like this is just temporary food or beverage, it's very specific. Um, think along more of the lines of the other accessory use customarily incidental to primary use, you know, in, in that kind of vein. Jean? I mean, excuse me. I mean, I'll, or it could just be that. I'll just, I'll just add there's probably something that's too big or too crazy. And if we all could think of what it was, we would say, oh, that doesn't belong in the town's open space. But I think the way to think about it after that is that's the job of whichever town entity has responsibility for the property to make that sort of decision. It shouldn't be this sort of random what's in the zoning bylaw and what's not in the zoning bylaw. So I think, oh, wait. I thought I see Melissa speaking, but I don't think she's speaking to me. Yep, let's go to Melissa next. Um, no, I agree. I mean, I, th I think it's something we have to kind of consider broadly in terms of who can apply. Um, and I think we have to have just some thought on, you know, who the organizing body is, because you just want to, you're checking for public safety, you know, kind of 
I think deterioration on the open space over time, like is it huge sums? Is it how often? Like there should be a little oversight just given you know the land itself. But I think the idea is good. And I think um, I, I you know support with the direction you're trying to. Thank you, Melissa. Steve? Uh, nothing else. Great. Uh, James, did you have any other questions on that particular? Yes. So, Go ahead. so, so I know the general way you read a zoning bylaw is that if it's not allowed explicitly in one of the tables somewhere, or there's not a body of text that says something is allowed, it's not allowed. That's just, the default is no, which is just kind of the way it is. Um, my, my other understanding is that it's a, having an entry in the zoning bylaw means that, so for example, the, the, the temporary food or beverage concession for profit at an event, it means that the, my understanding is, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the parks department cannot say, no, you cannot do this because we don't like it. They just have to attach conditions to it as to when and where you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So if, if, look, so my, the thought running through my head right now is completely take the open space district out of the use table and have an entry that says the uses that are allowed are determined by the body that runs it, however you want to write that. That's Gene, Gene shaking his head. <laughs> um, no, what would, what would, would you care to elaborate it, it, on the basically, basically, I really don't want to have to figure out broadly. I would love to be able to say that authority is completely delegated to the body that owns the land. They decide what happens, when, where, how, for what price, whatever it is. Is that is that anything like that even remotely possible? Gene. I think the advantage of keeping an open space district and having on the zoning map, which areas are open space, basically is another layer of protection for those open spaces that they don't get developed. No, no, I was thinking more along the lines of, as far as the uses, so, so keep the district, but for the uses, say the, the allowed uses are delegated to the body that owns the well, parcel. You don't, don't ditch the district. Well, I mean, the example I would, give you a little pushback in is the one we discussed earlier, which was the parking and whatever it said, where you might say whatever else we say. Oh. The zoning bylaw says that's not really open space if you start allowing um, parking, off street parking and loading mm. spaces. So, you know, I'm not sure where to draw the line there, but there are, in addition to yeah, you don't want it to be. I see. Okay, no, that's a, that's a good point. So maybe something to the effect of, unless otherwise written in a use table, it's allowed, and then you can explicitly say what you don't want. Like you don't want parking to be allowed just by the department. That's something that requires a permit. Okay, I can think about that. James, if I if I may, I'm just looking again at this section of other accessory use customarily incidental to primary use. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there is a companion to that that has in, you know, obviously wordsmithing a, a way to talk about other temporary accessory use that is incidental to the primary mm -hmm. use, which again, gives you some broadness, but again, identifies that it's temporary um, in nature um, as opposed to permanent, this, which is determined, which is in the way that I'm reading how it was written is more specific to a permanent. No, that, that's a good idea. Because the entire, most of the focus that I care about is temporary uses and right. letting, letting you do something in a park or something like if, it, if it, I think that's fair, if it's permanent modification, you probably want more than just the department. You want some sort of community input because everyone uses it. That's fair. Um, so I'm going to see if um, any members of the board have any other comments, and then I'm going to um, open this up for a, a short public comment period because James, I, I think, sorry, just let me one second and then I'll, I'll take your comment. What I'd like to propose is that you um, get a little bit of feedback from, you know, those members of the public who are on the, on the call. Um, but I see that um, 
you and Steve both had something else to, to add before we do that. And I am going to, so that we stay on, um, on topic, um, close that any public questions that might come up uh, by 9 p.m. But I'll, I'll take your comment first, James, and then I'll go to Steve. Okay. My, my comment was because I had a fourth one that we're not going to have time for tonight. Can I come back another time and talk about it? Sure, absolutely. Is that something that you want, did want to try and, and get in this evening? I'm uh, oh, sorry, I thought you just had. I, I'm reading that. I'm looking at the time and thinking probably another time. I also, I also, I also want to flesh it out a little bit more. That's um, fine. No, you um, can come back. Okay, any, okay. Just let Jenny know, and um, we'll make sure that it's posted on the agenda okay. um, for for you to to come back. Steve. Yeah, in terms of um, you know, Mr. Benson uh, gave me a little bit of a puzzle uh, in in terms of like. Tr and you and and yourself as well in terms of thinking like how would you actually word this the best i could come up with you know so far is um basically temporary group activities uh conducted by profit or non-profit for profit or non-profit organizations <laughs> i think that that about covers it. Human, human activity thank you steve any other um, comments no, uh, or questions before we open this up? Okay. Um, I will at this time open this up for any questions or comments that um, any member of the public joining us this evening would like to make on any of the um, uh, potential warrant article topics that um, James Fleming has presented us this evening. Again, noting that um, this is for discussion at this point, nothing has been proposed. Um, but any any feedback you'd like to give would be welcome. Um, if you could please use the raise hand function on your screen if you wish to make a comment. I will open public comment now. Okay, we do have one person's hand raised. Please note that you will have up to three minutes for your comment and please uh, identify yourself by your first, last name and address. Uh, so Don Seltzer, please go ahead. Thank you, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, on the first topic, uh, parking, I just want to point out um, unintended consequences, and that's for disabled um, handicapped parking spaces. That's set by state law um, on a schedule according to the number of total spaces in a lot. When you start saying for apartment buildings, okay, we're going to reduce the number um, from what normally is, you're also automatically reducing the required number of disabled spots. And maybe you want to tweak it a little bit um, and start putting in our local bylaw just how many disabled spots there should be for apartment buildings. And on the open space, um, I agree with James. Um, those two entries for temporary uses requiring special permits just don't make any sense. Um, in fact, it really doesn't belong in our zoning bylaws at, at all. It really belongs in our town bylaws. I think it's um, Article 4, which regulates the use of public areas. And that's where any um, revisions or um, additions to our laws should be specifying how parks and conference, uh, conservation areas should be utilized and who has the authority to, to um, make the determinations, which I think is ultimately the select board. And that would be my suggestion going forward, just to remove the two SBs for temporary uses and pass it over to the town bylaws um, and make any corrections there. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Richard. Uh, I, I apologize. I totally slipped my mind. Oh, that's okay, Ken. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, any other members of the public wishing to uh, to speak this evening on uh, the potential warrant articles? Okay. Seeing none, we will uh, close public comment on this item. Um, and James, just to wrap up, uh, do you? Uh, uh, have any other questions? I don't think so. I've got okay. uh, I've got some homework to do. That sounds great. Well, I really appreciate you entering this process so early. And um, again, we uh, welcome any any person who is interested in um, 
contemplating a Warren article for 2022 town meeting to um, please engage us. We'd love to work together with you and um, in the lead up to that, to that uh, filing. Thank you, James. Uh, so we will now uh, close agenda item number two and enter agenda item number three, which is an update on the upcoming planning meetings and activities related to the housing production plan. And I will turn it over to uh, Jenny Reed. Thank you, Rachel. Um, this is not just about the housing production plan, but multiple plans. And actually I'm gonna have Kelly, I'm gonna share the memo and Kelly is gonna talk about the upcoming meetings uh, that we are planning over the month of November. Great, thank you. Great. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, I'm Kelly Linema, Assistant Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Uh, we just wanted to inform the board of a number of meetings ranging from sort of local neighborhood meetings to townwide meetings that are coming up in the next few weeks. Um, and we do have one schedule change that I'll note at the end of this. Um, but the first is a public meeting on Wednesday night. This is our first, our kickoff meeting for the Miniman Bikeway planning project. Um, this is an overall planning project to discuss um, the, the full length of the bikeway from the Cambridge border all the way to Lexington. Um, and there's a lot of exciting work that's going into this project. Um, at this point, we're looking at discussions around issues, opportunities, um, ways that we can improve safety access and the overall user experience. And then this plan is gonna move forward to recommending those types of improvements, but also looking at a few specific locations where access is provided onto the bikeway and providing um, specific sort of conceptual plans for how we can improve those spaces. So we have this meeting on Wednesday. If you're unable to attend that meeting on Wednesday, we do have a, a survey that is out right now and we, we invite everyone to respond to that survey. Um, moving into next week, we have three meetings next week. Um, the first is the presentation of the draft housing plan. Um, this is gonna be one of the first presentations of the draft plan. So this is our public presentation. It's the third public presentation we'll be doing. Um, our last presentation was the discussion about um, goals and strategies. And then we also had an accompanying meeting in a box kit that went out for that. Now we're moving into strategies and recommendations. And so that is what Barrett Planning Group is going to be presenting on Tuesday, November 9. We're actually starting that meeting at 7.30 with sort of an overview of what has happened in the plan to date. It's kind of a refresher for anyone who is jumping into the process now and may not be aware of where we're at. And then at eight o'clock, um, we're getting more into a presentation of the draft housing plan. So that's gonna be about strategies and um, actions to move forward. We are also looking at, and I think um, Jenny is probably reaching out to you about this soon, doing, an, doing a separate presentation directly to the ARB about this, about this project. So this would be a fuller presentation to the ARB, but we do invite you to participate in this meeting as well. And that's that December, adding that December meeting is for that presentation. Um, so I, right now we tentatively have December 16th. I just need to hear back from a couple of members uh, whether or not they can attend that evening. Yeah. And then the other thing to note about that December meeting is we will be giving you a full copy of the draft plan um, in advance of that meeting with enough time for you to review the draft plan. Um, but this is really to prevent to present an overview of the plan before we hand off the draft to various reviewers. Um, and then we have two meetings on Wednesday night. The first is about Stratton Safe Routes to School. The town received a Massachusetts Department of Transportation Safe Routes to School Infrastructure Project Award of about a million dollars. Um, and this is to fund new sidewalk, sidewalk repair, um, improve safety along the route to Stratton Elementary School. Um, this is a public meeting for the community to hear about the public about the process of the project as we're moving into, I believe, 25% design. Um, and so if you are curious about this, if you live in the neighborhood, you wanna hear about the overall improvements and how they not only improve safety for children, but also for adults, um, this is a good meeting to go to and you'll find out more. There is additional information about this project, including the full project scope on the Department of Planning and Community Development's transportation planning page. And there's a link to that in this document. 
The second meeting um, is an exciting meeting about community development block grants. This is what we're calling a community development open house. And we are inviting, um, we're trying to encourage more members of um, nonprofits and other organizations to apply for funding through community development block grants. Um, this open house is going to be a two-part meeting. Um, the first is going to provide an overview of CDBG. And then the second part is going to be more of a discussion and Q&A around how to actually apply for funding through community development block grants. Um, so anyone who is curious about the community development block grant program, um, someone, anyone who's, advocate, who's a grassroots advocate or who is trying to encourage their organization to apply for funding should attend this. Um, it will also be recorded, but this is a really good opportunity to get your questions answered. And that's also on Wednesday, starting at seven o'clock. And then the final meeting, um, this meeting is the second community forum for the open space and recreation plan. This is the meeting that we have rescheduled. So we're moving this meeting to December 8, um, which is a Wednesday. It's gonna be held at the same time from seven o'clock to nine o'clock PM. Um, again, this is the second meeting and we'll be talking about the process and work done to date and not actually about the action plan, but talking about goals and strategies. So we'll be taking a look back at the town's existing open space and recreation plan, looking at those goals and strategies and really interrogating how those worked and what could be improved. And then taking feedback from the community on new goals that should be considered as we move forward into this um, development of the open space and recreation plan update. So again, that meeting is on December 8 from seven o'clock to nine o'clock PM. And you can find out more on the town website um, arlingtonmedia.gov slash open space. Um, and if anyone has any questions about these meetings, I'm happy to see if I can answer them or find out more and follow up later on. Thank you so much, Kelly. I really appreciate the comprehensive overview. You are all very busy. So thank you for <laughs> keeping all of these plans moving forward simultaneously on behalf of the town. Um, what I'll do is I'll just go around and see if anyone has any specific questions or comments, starting with Jean. Nope. Uh, Melissa? Um, yeah, great job, you guys. Lots going on. I think um, the CDBG op open house that you're inviting the public to, are there parameters for folks that people are aware of? Because they feel like you might get like CPA type folks looking for applying or would that still work for you? Uh, Jenny, do you want to follow up on that? I know there's specific um, sort of criteria for applying, but mm -hmm. yeah, we, we um, Mallory right Spellaben, who is our community development block grant administrator, will be who runs the whole CDBG program. Will be running that meeting and will be talking about the guidelines for applying, um, how to meet you know the various federal criteria for applying, and also if it's relevant. Uh, guide people to other potential grant opportunities. CPA already had a preliminary application deadline, um, but it is possible that uh, an applicant of CPA funds could also apply for CP, uh, CDBG, um, totally possible. So um, there's many, many options. And the point of it is really just to introduce how CDBG works and uh, get people excited to apply, hopefully. Great, thank you for the clarification. Uh, Steve, any questions? No questions. Great, Ken, any questions? Nope. Great, well, I um, again, I appreciate uh, all of these different items moving forward. I'm really looking forward to seeing the um, housing plan as well as the, the latest from the, from the bikeway. Those were really interesting meetings, the first few public forums, um, as well as the other items on this list. So thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Uh, so that closes agenda item number three. And uh, we are now moving to agenda item number four, which is the review of the meeting minutes from October 4th. And I will see if anyone has any uh, additions or corrections as Jenny pulls these up on the screen. And I'll start with Jean. Oh, you're on. I have two. Okay. Um, go down on the first page more, Jenny. Um, let me see, where is it? Um, 
there we go. About halfway down the last paragraph on that page, there's a sentence that says there is no public action to improve the property. Should the word public be private? Should it be when there is no private action? And then yes. the, the other, go to the next page. Very top of the next page. The last line, shouldn't it say Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development, not EPA? Massachusetts DHCD. Um, well, it's yeah, it it's MEPA review and approval. That's just to that's just to send to DHCD. All of these things go in an urban renewal plan application. Yeah, so you do it, need it, approval. It's of never MEPA. done Massachusetts EPA. It's then done Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. Okay, you want me to spell that out? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Thank you. That's it, thanks. Great, thank you. Um, while we're on page two, two um, I just had one item with regard to, in uh, the second paragraph on page two, uh, it's the one, two, three, fourth line um, where you're talking about the town manager, the select board, the board and the planning department and the finance committee. Um, I'm assuming the board is the redevelopment board. Yeah. Right? So I just thought we could clarify that one. And that's all I had. Uh, Ken, any uh, additions or corrections for this site for this uh, set of meeting minutes? I'm good, thank you. Okay, uh, Melissa? Nope. Okay, thank you. Steve? Uh, no changes to propose. Okay, great. Is there a uh, motion to accept the meeting minutes from October 4th, 2021 as amended? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Great, we'll take a vote for approval. Uh, starting with Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Uh, Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. The meeting minutes from October 4th have been approved as amended. All right, moving on to uh, agenda, item, agenda item number five, open forum. Uh, we'll invite any member of the public who is with us this evening who wishes to address the board um, to please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I will call on I will call on members of the public as hands are raised. Okay, seeing none, we will now close the open forum. And that concludes our agenda for today. So I will now uh, see if there is a motion to adjourn. I move that the November 1st meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board be adjourned. Second. Great, we'll take a vote. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Steve? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you all and have a great evening.